Hi everybody, I'm Wes Anderson, the Community Relations Director here at Southern Hancock. I'm here with our Safety Director, Miles Herkamp, today. And uh, it's been a couple years, Mr. Herkamp, since we've yep. done a public kind of conversation about school safety. And yep. I know uh, that's kind of on the forefront of everybody's mind with you know, some of the stories that have come out in the last couple of months yep. here as we wrapped up the school year. So felt like this would be a good opportunity to, to circle back and talk about what we can talk about related to school safety. And I'm going to let you talk about uh, what we can't talk about here in just a few minutes. So um, first and foremost, I, I want to make it clear to everybody, our district has a safety plan. We are required by law in the state of yes. Indiana to have one of those. Um, I have one. This is an old one um, from a couple years ago, 2017. And in here is every potential thing that could possibly happen. And in it, there are plans for what we would do in those specific situations and, and a lot of thought and care has gone in to what these plans look like each year and how they're edited and what changes are made based on our response and um, that's a big process and a big job yep. but I want to stress that this information is private and our safety plans are private they are not available to be looked at we're not available to talk about it can you talk a little bit about why that is yeah that we do not want to make our safety plans uh, public because the more information that gets out there, the more people will know about it. And if we have an emergency, they know where we're going and what we're doing. So we're trying to keep that in-house so that we, are, we can keep our kids and our staff safe. And I want to be clear, it's Indiana law that keeps those private as yes, well. Yes, yes. Um, that, that makes those safety plans private. So yep. I do want to take an opportunity, though, to talk very generally about a couple of things couple of steps that we've taken to help secure our schools and help our teachers with safety in general. And um, one of the things, why don't you grab those flip cards right there and talk a little bit about what those are, what they're used for, and, and what kind of things are in there. Uh, first, we, uh, countywide, we work with an organization called I Love You Foundation, and they are set up for school safety, and we use a lot of their information to make sure our schools are safe. Sure. Grab this and here. These posters are in our classroom, and it's just a quick way for our teachers to say, okay, if this happens, this is what I'm doing. We're doing the same thing with these flip charts. All of our teachers have these flip charts, and these are the most common scenarios that might pop up, and in each one of them, it tells in order what these should be doing. So if they're in a stressful situation, they can just look at this and say, I need to do this, 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 and this. Yeah, and that, that's got instructions on a number of different situations, yes. fire, tornado, which, you know, is obviously, I think, what most of us remember from being school yes. aged. Yes. But obviously, those things have changed now. Oh, and yeah. We now talk about intruders, and we talked about um, armed subjects that are outside the school, armed subjects that are inside yep. the school. A lot of those scenarios that we need to be ready for are covered in there for what our teachers need to do when that situation comes up. That's great. They don't need to go consult the big the big binder right. and make sure they turn to the right page or it, it's all right there on their card. Just flip to what you need. Here are my instructions. Away we go trying to get the kids as safe as we can. And on top of that, the terminology that's in here is used by all the police agencies in Hancock County. Yeah. So when we say lockdown, and no matter if they're part of the Hancock County Sheriff's Department or New Palestine Police Department, they know exactly what we're talking about. Yeah, and you mentioned it briefly. I do, I do want to talk for a second about I Love You Guys, the I Love You Guys Foundation, which is, is what these posters come from. And, um, that's another thing that all the schools have done to unify is, is uh, yes. our, and our, that's our law enforcement included, that's everybody. All are under the I Love You Guys Foundation. I'll put their website up here. You can go check it out. Uh, all their material is, is available. Um, the foundation was started by uh, some parents who lost a child in a school shooting about 20 years yes. ago. Yes. And they uh, became committed to c creating basically a simple, easy, effective protocol for schools to use. Yes. And um, a couple of our administrators have to go out to the yes. foundation and get some training on the protocol and, and it's something that we've adopted. And um, again, I'll throw that website up here one more time if you want to go take a look at that. Uh, I think it's great information to have and, and good for you to know the difference between what some of these situations are. What we used to call a lockout and a lockdown are different. Um, now those are called different things, but you know, each, each situation is a little bit different, each status is a little bit different, and each status requires a little bit different response. Um, also with that, because if, if there is a situation at school and your child 
send something that says we're in a lockout or lockdown, you'll understand what that is. Right. Because a lockdown is more serious than a lockout. Right. So the last thing I want to briefly touch on here with you, Mr. Herkamp, is what we communicate. And there are a lot of laws, state and federal, that protect student privacy. And um, it's always my goal as a communications director to communicate everything I can to you. But in some instances, that information is protected and yes. it can't be shared. Right. So uh, that's part of, of what we do together uh, in an emergency situation is work to craft that communication that both lets you know what's going on, but we also protect our students and we follow the law about what student information we can share with all of you in our community. Right. And hope you're patient with us because the, we can't give you detailed information. Right. So one of the last things I want to talk about today is kind of security around our building and, and how visitors come and go in our building. And um, we're going to head over to New Palestine Elementary School and we're going to meet our new lead SRO, Scott McDaniel, over there. And Scott's going to kind of walk us through a little bit about coming into our buildings and, and what that process looks like when you show up to one of our schools for any kind of school business whatsoever. So we'll be right back. Okay, we're here in the lobby of New Palestine Elementary School. I have Scott McDaniel here, who is our new uh, lead school resource officer here for the school corporation. And Scott, first, I want to say welcome. You're coming on board for the upcoming school year. And um, I think a, a lot of our community watching this video knows who you are. You've been around a long time. Uh, your kids graduated from here. Your wife graduated from here. You've been a long time New Pal resident. So um, we want to say first, thanks for, for coming on board. And second, welcome to the corporation. Well, thank you very much. I am looking very much forward to the opportunity of working with the school system and the students. Uh, I enjoyed many years working as a uh, coach while I was a law enforcement officer previously for 25 years. And uh, it's been a great community to work in and raise a family. And I look forward to ensuring that everyone else that lives in the community has that same experience. So I want to talk a little bit about the job that SROs do. It's an important job, obviously. Uh, in our corporation, all of our school resource officers are police officers. They're either reserve officers or active duty officers, which we think is important. Um, we don't want just some random person to show up and you know start doing security. We, we want trained police officers in here doing this job. So can you talk a little bit about you know, what the day-to-day -day of a school resource officer is and kind of what some of those expectations and standards are in case of emergency? Well, sure. Absolutely, first and foremost, ensuring the safety of the students, staff, administrators, and teachers at the school system from the elementary, intermediate, middle school, and high school levels is paramount. So that's job one. And how we accomplish that uh, is to make sure that we have good security measures in place, we have good relationships with other law enforcement agencies in the community, such as New Pal Police Department and the Hancock County Sheriff's Department, who would be our initial first responders, aiding school resource officers. And the other thing I would like to uh, emphasize is we really need to have great communication with the kids in our community. Mm -hmm. They have to trust the law enforcement officers that are here on a day-to-day -day basis because obviously kids are in the know on things sometimes before we are. And if they see something, they need to report that. If they see something, they need to say something. And if they don't trust us, they won't do that. So building trust with the students is going to be job one coming in on the first day. Now, obviously, school safety is an important topic right now with you know some of the school incidents that happened kind of April, May towards the end of the last school year. And a lot of the questions I received in the past few weeks are about how you get in our building. So um, I, I chose to do this interview here in the lobby because this is kind of the first point, really, where a visitor or anybody would show up to a school to try to get in. And, um, you know, we have our buzzer system, and, and uh, I'm going to give you a quick demo here in a second on how that works. But you know, for the most part, a visitor comes in, they push the button. We have a camera back here behind the desk for our front office staff to kind of evaluate who that person is, what their business is here in, uh, in the corporation. So I want to ask you kind of what the protocols are going forward for evaluating those people when they come to the door? Sure. Uh, if I were the person sitting at the desk, I would be asking who the person is, what the nature of their business is at the school, who their student is that they're a parent or guardian for, uh, and then we need to make sure too uh, that when they're looking out there that they look beyond the person that's at the door. Perhaps someone else could be around the corner or a little bit farther back and try and gain immediate entry after someone gets buzzed to get cleared. 
So diligence and not taking things for granted, uh, just recognizing a familiar face. Uh, doing things the right way every time is going to be paramount to that first step coming through the door. And one of the things we want to stress here is there may be times where you know our front office staff may be uncertain about who you are or what you're doing and they may not let you in the building and you know we want to be clear that's not a personal attack or, or anything like that we just want to be safe and we don't want to take anything for granted like you said so there may be cases where um, you show up here to NPE and you ring the buzzer and our front office staff are not comfortable and, uh, and more often than not, they're going to call you and have you come over and kind of take a look at the situation. You know, if all appears to be well, obviously they're not going to be under arrest, they're not going to be charged with crime or anything like that, but we just want to make sure we know who you are, what your business is, and that you have a reason to be in our school. And, and I think that is an important first step into securing our schools every day. I think everyone would rather be safe than sorry, and you can't be uh, too safe in, these, in this day and age. We want to emphasize to make sure that we are protecting your children and the staff and the people that work in this building on a day-in and day-out basis, and you do that by following the rules of the building. Now, like we talked about in the beginning of the video with Mr. Herkamp, there are a lot of pieces of our safety plan that we really can't talk about uh, that, that's important to protecting the safety of our kids. Though, I will note, if you do have a question about safety, I'll put my email here on the bottom. I'll put Mr. Herkamp's email here on the bottom. You can contact us. We're happy to communicate what we can communicate uh, to kind of help you feel at ease about what happens here in our school buildings every day. So, uh, Officer McDaniel, I want to say thank you again. Welcome aboard. And I want to say thanks to all of you for, uh, for watching uh, this informative video on the safety procedures here at Southern Hancock. Thank you for having me today.